We're just gonna have you quiet down. And if you wanna have conversations, which you should, you can definitely do so, just not in here. We just wanna try and keep it so people inside of the room can hear. As you can tell, it's very loud out there. Um, we wanna say thank you so much to some of our sponsors that are helping put on this event. And one of them is actually here. It's a local Seattle company. It is Pick Monkey, And they're here to do a breakout session with you guys all about some of the cool stuff that they have to you know, offer. So can we give a round of applause for Pick Monkey? Hi guys. Is, that, is it working? Okay. All right. Okay. Hi. So we're gonna talk about building your brand through creating cool brand assets. And we're from Pick Monkey. Um, my name's Karen Cooper. I wear a lot of different hats, but today I'm here in the function of being brand director and with me is Evan Cabana. And he does uh, video for social. And um, I'm gonna just talk about branding a little bit and using image editing tools. And Evan is gonna walk you through um, creating some assets. So um, first of all, uh, Pig Monkey um, is uh, seven years old. We are in Seattle, and um, I started um, like day two, and we were like four people in a little one-bedroom um, apartment. It wasn't really an apartment, but it was like that size, and um, we've been building since then, and um, I myself have sort of grown up with branding a company that started as a little thing and has become a bigger thing. Now we have like, 400 some odd thousand subscribers and um, you know hundreds of thousands of millions of you know uh, page views a day and so we we've gotten bigger and we've had to invest in our own brand and we have tools that help you do your branding so that's what we're here to talk about um, so there's good research around why it's useful to you to really invest in your brand and ink um, Inc. Magazine did a survey and um, they found out that 90% of the uh, 200 companies they talked to said that branding consistency is important, that you're three to four times more likely to have visibility with your customers if your branding is consistent, and that it leads to revenue. Like when you're a recognizable brand and you do high aesthetic for your brand, people perceive you as quality, that you have quality content. And a lot of people make their decision in that first second when they're seeing your front-facing materials. So this is just an example of, you know, um, you know, when you have a graphic designer and you have, this is an early investment in branding that we did at Monkey. I would say this is like three months old and it was, I'm sorry, three or four years old, and we were a smaller company then, and this is just the level of sort of branding investment we were doing, and just how do we treat our logo? What kind of um, photo editing do we do? What's our style? What fonts are we using? What colors are we using? Now our brand guidelines are like 30 pages, and we have, um, we've developed a narrative. What does our company do so that, and, and ta different taglines to use in different placements so that we're always telling our customers who we are at a glance, and when we say things, it's from a unified um, storytelling kind of point of view and also you know, visuals. But today, we're gonna really just talk about assets, creating your assets for your brand, and we have a few tips and observations from out in the field. Um, here's some people who are here today, and you can see that um, <laughs> Uh, visual branding, you know, you, people have been talking about that already today, right? A consistent look and feel. And um, Carly and Red, White, and Blue Mom and Chris Perillo, you can see in their um, video playlists that these thumbnails, they all have a consistent consistency and it really creates their brand. Um, you know, you can get that kind of visual consistency with either a consistent color or a consistent you can see that in um, the Pig Monkey um, thumbnails we have here, the font is consistent, but the color is not. And you can see in uh, Diana's that um, that the color is consistent and the font is not. So here's another example: Amy uh, Amy Landino, who uh, we've worked with at Pig Monkey. She, her composition is the consistency in her thumbnails. Um, also, this is another YouTuber we've worked with, Alicia Marie, and um, 
you know, really tailoring your aesthetic to your audience. Alicia Marie's audience is very young. They're, you know, um, I'm, I shouldn't say for sure that how many of them are teenagers, but you can tell her aesthetic here is really tailored to her audience. Um, Shelly uh, does, um, uses a brand consistency that is varied, right? So she's using it to distinguish She's using color to distinguish different playlists and content types and series. That's another thing you can think about, that you have one brand look, but you have variations within it. Um, another observation we have is that it's, it's okay to change. This is um, Tyler Sheldon, whose um, uh, YouTube channel is Tribe Tyler. And um, he used to, on the top two, he used to have a sort of vlog vloggy look. And more recently, he's um, switched to um, really titling, baking in the titles and his thumbnails, and he has sort of his logo up at the top and um, more information baked into the thumbnail. We see a lot of variation there. Some people do, some people don't. Um, and it's whatever you know is working for you. Um, another thing that um, will sort of cue off our, our uh, demo is you know just finding ways to get high production values and. Um, here's an example. This is, you know, James Corden's um, car carpool karaoke, and you can see he's not merely putting titling on his graphics. He's, he's chosen something that gives him high production values of, you know, desaturating the color and then colorizing the background and cutting, um, cutting out the um, prominent uh, subject of um, the composition, and that's just like a great look that he's using across there, and it's it gives him a boost. The higher production values is that higher aesthetic that makes you people at your front face, front door they perceive you as quality quality content. Um, so now we'll have a dem uh, Evan will do a demo of making a uh, thumbnail with Pink Monkey. And we'll show you a couple of uh, fun tricks um, to try. We're gonna, and because we're a little worried about Wi-Fi, we're gonna play um, a video, and Evan's gonna ask me to stop it when it's <laughs> due. You gotta hold that real quick. All right. And, um, let me switch to. So what we really appreciate about, um, so here, here we are on the landing page, right? When you come into Pink Monkey, and so you can see up here in Hub, which is the cloud-based storage system and organizing tool that we have within our product. We, that's kind of the place where you will keep all of your consistent assets, your brand logo, um, colors, fonts, things that you want to keep and always be pulling from to get this consistent brand look across your product. It's right here in the home page. There's all different kinds of templates ready to go. As you can see, YouTube thumbnail is one of our prominent ones. Um, all other kinds of social media is just ready to go in the ratio sizes. Whenever those update, we update them so it's just, it's. You don't have to do all that research and make sure everything is ready to go for your social platform. So we dove right into our templates. There's all kinds of design templates that you can use to find your style or get inspiration. Even every day, it's really, I know personally, it's really hard to find the creative inspiration to hit what you want to hit. And so we offer that, but we also offer a search for YouTube specific things. So we went into our YouTube thumbnail template right here, right? So now we're in the creator. Uh, we're going to delete out the YouTube thumbnail image and that layer. And a lot of this stuff is very intuitive, and, that, and that's kind of at the core of PicMonkey, is we want to make sure that this you don't need a degree to figure out this, these kind of design aspects to make your brand work for you. It's very intuitive. It's very simple, simple to use, but also really powerful. So went in, I'm making a thumbnail here converting this to a layer, you have your layers palette, you have your graphics palette to adjust things over here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into my graphics, all these, there's touch up or portraiture, if you're doing that kind of stuff. Going over to our graphics, we're going to bring in, as a graphic, your assets. And you can bring in your assets from your hub, from your computer, wherever. As you can see here, I have all my collections that I've organized things into, right? hashtag campaigns, your brand assets, all your marketing and stuff. This is really just about organizing so that you don't have to comb through millions of folders on your computer. It's all right there where you will be using it. So the, these are examples. This is all DiMaggio Dog Walkers, which is a fake brand that we built from the ground up, um, but we've kind of fallen in love with because this is really fun and there's a lot of puppies involved. Um, so here we go. So I have a brand logo. I'm gonna bring that in as a graphic. 
and start building my thumbnail. I'll bring it in the background, right? So I'm like, okay, this is a series that I'm gonna be doing. And so as you can see from all our examples from these prominent YouTubers, you are creating series, you want consistency, maybe it's in your font type, in your color, et cetera, but you have these, they're easily accessible. I'm bringing in the background because this is a particular series of, uh, I vlog when I walk these dogs to the park and I just document it and I put it up on YouTube, it's fun to watch, right? So I know my aesthetic. So I'm gonna go in my graphics, you can add all kinds of stuff. I want my logo to pop out a little bit more. So I'm gonna isolate it from the background, right? And these are all just some core kind of design techniques and branding techniques to get consistency. You can eye drop, you can match your colors there. Um, anything to just kind of keep your brand on point of how you're doing this. Because the great thing, which you'll see later, is you can make copies and everything copies itself. So you can just swap a single asset out if you have a series, right? Easy to use. So I'm gonna bring in, as you can see, we'll cover later the background erase of getting the little puppy out of the whole scene, but I'm gonna bring him in, and then you start creating. You can adjust it to make it pop out. You can go to your effects and maybe add some drop shadow. Um, you know, drop shadow to each their own. Some people love it, some people hate it. Uh, but I really like it in cases like this, so you can have them pop out and get a little bit of 3D effect. Brought in my other little corgi buddy here. And you can see it's just, it's easy, it's, it's simplistic to, to use. And so a lot of other photo editing programs out there that are really, really intensive, it's just, what's that? There's my drop shadow. Um, you, can, you can just kind of tell it's a little bit more, and this is for us, and this is why we're always updating this kind of UI, and this uh, user experience, is because we don't want it to be crazy. We want it to be clean, we want it to be nice. You enjoy getting in here and adding some graphics. If you have a particular brand font, you can upload your own font, or we got hundreds of our own, obviously, in there. Play with things, keep it consistent, and, okay, so I have Doggy Park, Doggy Park Date, I don't know why I did Doggy instead of just Dog Park Date, but I was having fun. Uh, so in here, we have all kinds of text manipulation, right? You can curve it, you can do anything to it that you could do to a graphic drop shadow, erasing. You can erase part of it and then retype the word and it remembers where you erased. It's intelligent in that, in that fashion. Um, you can see as it starts to generate here, just kind of like it's not taking too long, but this is also building a primary asset, right? And a lot of you have done this for your thumbnails. You're building this, you're testing, you're playing to find your brand and to find your style, your colors, your font, etc. And then you just, you copy, right? You make copies and it duplicates these assets. So everything's there. So my next episode, it might be two different little doggies, right? So I bring in those dogs. It might be, you know, you didn't go to the dog park, you went to the beach and you just like, boop, you swap out, you make copies. So it's ease of use because you're all creators and that's, you're out there creating, you're making videos, you're editing videos. You don't want to spend just as much time making your assets and your thumbnails, but you want them to be clean. It's the first thing people see. So you do this once or twice, you whatever, and then you copy and you make things new. You make it your own. Uh, this is a fun one, so you don't pause it here, are the Nip Tuck tool over here, the touch-ups. Now touch-ups are great, because a lot of you, and I do some on my own, like you're taking a picture of yourself. You are your brand. You're not, like this is, you don't have DiMaggio dog walkers. You yourself are your brand, and so a lot of times, it's a headshot, it's a portrait, whatever. But you also know when you overdo it, it can look really fakey, right? Or it can look kind of weird or unapproachable or unprofessional. So we have all these touch-up tools that can really add subtle hints of, I went out, I did an awesome thing, and I had a huge zit on my forehead all day, it was really, oh my god. Blemish remover, right? Just like a little simple thing to maybe soften your skin. But if you use those tools, you don't have to use them just for portraits. There's kind of fun graphic ways that you can come in and do goofy character stuff too because at the core, it's just a tool that's doing a certain thing, right? This is expanding, this is shrinking, this is blurring, this is smudging, right? So you can get in there and I'm now maybe I have a goofier channel rather than a more professional, clean brand channel or these are always fun. This is a fun series and so I add fun elements. All I'm doing here is I'm getting the, the fill tool and I'm just kind of bloating out their eyeballs a little bit. And I know a lot of you have seen this across YouTube and it's a fun thing. Obviously it works on real people and dogs, not the older people in my mind, but on these two people right here. Uh, 
you know, and look, and so I'm going back, I'm just changing, I'm adding more graphics because that didn't pop out quite enough for me. And keep in mind, this is all, I'm doing this all at a slow pace. And once you're learning this tool, you're just in there and you're cranking through and you're creating these assets. And everything, as you can see up here in the corner, the changes were saved and it's saved automatically to your hub instantly. Whenever you're doing things, every click, every everything, it's saving, it's saving, it's saving. So your computer shuts down, you want to go back later, it's always saved and it's saved in these layers, right? If you haven't flattened your whole project, it's saved in those layers so you can go back and you can swap something out, you can swap to the next thing. Um, so there you go, so there's a fun little one. I'm going back to my hub, I'm gonna make a copy of this really quick because I like the pink, I wasn't super in love with the pink, or I have a design team, or I have people I want to um, consult with, and so I'm gonna make some options. I'm gonna be like, hey, what should I do for this series? Hey, I just wanna swap this out and see what it might look like on my next one. Boom, they're right there, they're saving, they're in the hub. You know, and so it's just this ease of use because again, you don't want to spend all of your creative time when you're making content for your viewers, when you're doing stuff, focusing or getting in the weeds with some design tool. You want to be able to know how to use it, have your aesthetic locked down, remain consistent, and make engaging creative content. As you all know, when you land on a YouTube page, other than the autoplay video, if you have one, you're looking at images, you're not looking at videos yet. You haven't clicked into videos. And so you need to make sure that this, these thumbnails are representing your brand and how you want to be represented. Moving forward, okay, so we can skip forward a little bit to the erase part. Okay, so now I'll briefly show you, and this is, this is right now currently what we can do with our erase tool. And we have some very cool erase tool features, especially on our mobile app coming that are very intelligent, and so right now, and that's coming very soon, and right now what we do is we can erase, and just how you would, I mean, it is what it sounds like, you can erase out these features, you can adjust that, you can do a simple thing, you don't need to be in front of a green screen every single time, if you're in your editing software for video, you can keep things out, but if you're just, you want to stay in this product, you, it's simple, it's easy, you can adjust it, obviously, as you know, you can adjust the hardness and the strength so it's not a hard edge and looks fake, right? You can smooth it out, you can get in there with the little details, and then a good trick that I like to do is just to crop the rest of it out. I'm sure, sure you guys all know that, but, so here we go, and now, and you can export at any time, right? You can export, you can share, you can edit a copy, but regardless, it's saving in your hub. So like, you will never lose this work, it's always there. And now I've saved it, you can export it as a PNG, which you all know if you wanna bring them in as actual media assets in your videos, and you, you're gonna add motion to them, right, in iMovie or in any other editing software, they're right here, and you can just export them right out and use them. That way it's updating there, and look, there was a new one I just made, and now he's in, and I can clean that up as much as I want, but you can do that consistently, and I have this template ready to go that I use all the time. So that's, that's what we're all about, is we're about, and in regards to YouTube, right, because we are not a YouTube-centric company. We are a design tool to help you make these visuals. We have our own YouTube channel, which we create videos for, for tutorials for this, we have marketing campaigns and all that kind of stuff, and so we live in the world of YouTube, but we live in it in an educational sense, right? And a lot of people, like maybe you are a reviewer, maybe you are a mechanic, you know, maybe you are trying to educate people, and so you build your aesthetic accordingly, but maybe you're an entertainer, and maybe you love to go vlog and you're out on the street and you're doing stuff, but it all comes back down to, we all have the same bones, right? We're all, we all have, a brand that we want to be consistent with, that we want to be engaging, and we want to easily build because we're focused on other stuff. And that's what we like to do at Big Monkey, and that's what we can offer. Thank um, you for listening to me. Yeah, what, so we wanted to also turn it back to you guys and see if uh, we could generate a discussion on what's working for you, what are things that you wish you could do and you're not sure if there's a tool, or whatever tool you use, what are you finding works, and what are you liking or disliking? I have a quick question. So I was under the impression that at some point you, as an older creator, I had the ability to customize thumbnails, but that I was under the impression now you really stuck with more, more 
more limited choices. Is that not accurate? When someone, let's say you open a channel today and you wanted to adjust your thumbnails to make something sexier than the three that you were given as options, do you have the ability to customize that? Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I yeah. Yeah. So, but I thought that yeah. with the progression of time that was yeah. came out or his grandfather. And, and are you talking as well about in YouTube itself, how it generates those thumbnails for you? I specifically just control over it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And down there in, and anybody here who's more savvy than I, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe there's a customized thumbnail button, right? And you can go in there and you can you can load in these assets. Because it, it, it's gotten, YouTube has gotten pretty intelligent about, at least when you have title cards, it can say like, this is probably what you want as your thumbnail. But to actively be controlling that aesthetic, right, is that's the next level professional. You're branding, you know what you're doing. Um, and in terms of the types of aesthetic that are out there, like all the examples we showed, it varies, it totally varies up. For us, in terms of being marketers and coming from a brand new company, it's about that consistency. You might have something that no one's ever seen before, but it's not all over the place every single time, because when you get there on your channel, it's a little bit like, oh, does this person know what they're doing that. This is kind of weird. Like, if they can't, right? You want them to be like, don't think twice about this. I know what I'm doing. Come in and watch my content. So, yeah, absolutely. Define your own. Define, be, as I like to say, be authentic. Be yourself. But having that consistent brand will level you up for sure. Well, as you can see in the, in the at Amy Landino's, right, hers, it was just pictures of herself and the information came across in her title in her videos rather than on it. And so I think a lot of that has to do with ease of clickability. If somebody knows right away, you know, if it says WTF, question mark, question mark, like over the front, that's like click in and like what the heck's going on in this video? You know, you want to get that click in. But a lot of that, personally, I believe, is based on your audience, it's based on your brand, the kind of content you're selling. Amy Landino's is a lot more, uh, you could say, upscale lifestyle, you know, beauty type living. She's about that clean aesthetic, and so. We have talked to some um, creators who are like, I need to bake in the text because when people are scrolling, there's critical information that's going to have them pick me. And the example that I came across is a woman who is a, um, she has a cooking channel and she wants people to know instantly that her recipe is gluten free and she doesn't want to depend on people to read the caption under the video. So she wants that information to look big. It's a scroll stopper. Who else has some, like a good experience from like an uplift that they saw when they started just investing more time and, and really focusing on, on their branding? Or a bad one. <laughs> what, what tools are you guys using? So historically we've relied on, uh, this, is, this is not as a YouTuber, this is kind of as a company relied on our designers to yeah. do things for us, and yeah. that's often a yeah. stopping point. Yeah. So have you seen companies use a mix of their in-house designers to create layers and then empower their employees to use PicMonkey to modify? Yeah, that's so where we live too, is that we have an amazing design team, and we do so much work that we can't get all of their time. And so they'll set up a cool design and then we'll replicate it. Um, and then sometimes, you know, we have we also have people like, you know, Fabs on our social team. She's just, she didn't come with a degree in design, but she just, once the aesthetic is established by the design department, she's like, I don't know how to do that. I can replicate that. And that's why, I think that's where I think creators are at right now, regardless of the size of your company, is everybody Everybody who's a creative pretty much needs to have access to all the pieces of um, creating your content and um, to be reliant on, you know, siloed departments or siloed, you know, freelancer that you have to go to to get something. It, it feels like it's it's just becoming um, something people can't do, you know, the more content you create. 
And, and many as you, um, you may know, as individual creators, you will often reach out to third party illustrators or designers or creators for your assets, right? Like, I want a caricature of myself drawn. I want something like that. And so they can provide you these assets. And then oftentimes it's like, okay, and I want to use them in all these different ways but I don't really know how. I guess I need to go back to that person. Hey, will you make some more thumbnails for me using the, you know, you want to be able to in control of that. You want to be able to lock in your core elements and then easily be able to use them how you want to. So whereas we get a lot of our assets from our design department, it's design approved, it's on brand, have at it, and I'm going to use them in our videos in these capacities, right? Because they're brand approved, they're, they're on point, they're part of our aesthetic. And so you might be doing the same as an individual creator. When you ask for assets made, you need to be able then to manipulate those. Yeah, absolutely, and you could, and if you saw in our collections mode there, when I was like, oh, it's a hashtag holiday or whatever, we actually use that other than a third party application. We will use that to sample, right, what our Instagram feed might look like. Like we, we populate our collection with that and we curate it to be like, okay, this is what this might look like on my other social platforms, cool, good to know. So you can kind of just like, you can plan across all your channels and all your media in all that, and we have those we have those templates for all of that, for Instagram, for Twitter, for YouTube, it's all there, so you don't have to think and get to the nitty gritty there, it's ready for you, you just put in your own stuff. Yeah, 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 so other examples of other branding assets, thank you, <laughs> Shelly. Um, social posts, interstitial graphics, you know, like if you can make that match, you know, your brand aesthetic, that's great. Transition. Right down to it, yeah, transition. Right down to, um, you know, business cards, obviously. Right. Um, having, having it all work together um, is cool, so, yeah. Um, I, any of you guys have, um, a, like, a brand that's moved from, or your, you know, your persona as a YouTube personality, like, moved from one stage to the other, and observations about what you had to bring to the table when you did that? Brand evolution. Evolution, yeah. Nope. <laughs> well, it's definitely not something to be afraid of, right? If you're happy with your brand, don't do it. it. It works for you, but we can see you can see that sometimes it's what people like to do for growth and or they establish new this time change. So this might fall out of trend, or I want to do this this way. You need that it's something to always be conscious of and to always think of because you are representing yourself out there and people and it shows. You know, when you're professional and you look professional and you have a common aesthetic, you're going to be perceived that way. I think that's our time. Thank you guys so much for listening. We'll be out there and be here the rest of the day. Oh, and um, we we would love to have um you some YouTubers come to Pink Monkey so we can learn more about what you need from our products. And we have a little sign up sheet in the back. Um, if you'd love to come to the office, we'll feed you and we'd love to talk to you and stuff. So there's a little, in the Pink Monkey table, there's a little sign-up sheet if you're interested. Thank you.